Good morning. Welcome to St. John's United Church in Kempville on the 3rd of April. Another Sunday of COVID-19 quarantine. We do hope you're enjoying this video and the videos that have been produced of our services for the past eight weeks. We uh, want to draw your attention to the fact that yes, we are in quarantine still. So our anniversary celebration this weekend has been canceled, of course. The anniversary service is here now. And the uh, variety show on Saturday night, of course, is not going to be happening. Most unfortunate. In support of all the frontline workers, all the first-line workers, in the, during this uh, pandemic response, uh, we have been ringing the church bell. And we're looking for volunteers. If you are interested, if you would please get hold of Helen at the office, and she will put in, be putting together a sign-up sheet. She has folks for next week. She's looking for people to help out the weeks after. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you Bev Buckingham. Bev is not new to St. John's. Bev grew up here many years ago. Oh. And it was interesting when uh, the Worship Commission was putting together the idea of an anniversary service, we had invited Bev to come and be our guest speaker. And then we ran into this situation that we currently find ourselves here in the province. And then going forward, we thought, well, we could still do it. And one of the things that came to mind as I was having conversation with Bev over the idea, I went through uh, my archives and I found a photo, which Bev says is 1996, and it's a photo of a CGIT gathering, and you will see Bev in the photo, and I'm not going to tell you which one, you folks can take a look and query everybody as to who it is, but also of note in the photo is Bev's mother, and quite remarkable to think that Bev started here, and now is back here at home again. Bev grew up in the church. She says she has fond memories of St. John's. She has ministered in the United Church of Canada since 1984, serving in Brockville, Ottawa, Seaway Valley, Mississauga, Burlington, and Canada. Bev retired, supposedly, in 2017. But she continues to supply leadership in area churches as the supply minister. Bev has two daughters, Erin and Shannon, also have fond memories of Kempville and St. John's, and of course, the idea of coming home to Grandpa and Grandma's. Bev was baptized and confirmed here. She was married here, and in 2009, assisted Linda, Reverend Linda, at Shannon's wedding. On the social side, Bev loves to bake and read, walk her dog, sew, quilt, and take pictures outside of God's amazing world. We welcome Bev Buckingham to our pulpit this morning to lead us in worship. Thank you.
over to me as we start our worship service with this call to worship. We come as we are, questioning, wondering, hoping. We come knowing that God accepts us just as we are, learning, praying, singing. Let us quiet our minds and still our hearts so that in this space, wherever that space is for all of us today, we might strengthen our lives and find our spirits inspired. May we feel the Spirit of God here amongst us today and always. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, on this anniversary Sunday, help us remember that you have called each of us to membership in this place. You have called us to be a community of faith. In our struggles, hold us together. In our celebrating, be our joy. In our serving, may we do so abundantly in the name of Jesus, our shepherd and guide. In the midst of our fears and failures, our loneliness and despair, wrap us in the warmth of your redeeming love and remind us that we are yours, the sheep of your pasture. Let us join together in the singing of He Leadeth Me, found in Voices United 657.
worship one Sunday morning in my late teens, and I will never forget the experience and the feelings that I had that morning. The butterflies in my stomach, the nervous energy that propelled me, and the feeling of belonging that lifted me as I became aware that here in this place where I grew up, there was a space for me in leadership. It was a lesson that has stayed with me all of these years, and it helped form how I have dealt with, young, with the youngest members of the churches that I have served. I have always appreciated the ideas that flow so freely from our children, and the ease with which they take on a project and run with it. I have been very aware of that here on the Sundays that I have been able to worship with you. You children out there worshiping with us this morning are amazing. So I'd like to take a moment and talk directly to you. I brought a book with me. This was made by the children of my church in Burlington. It was created in 2009. It is entitled, Dear God Letters. It all came about from a conversation I had with a young man of eight. Mason wanted to talk about prayer. And he wondered if he was to ask the congregation to write letters, because that's what he thought. He thought that talking to God in prayer was like writing a letter to God. And he wondered if he asked the congregation if they were to write their letters, first of all, would they? And then, could we put it into a book? Well, we asked the congregation, and they did. And we produced a book. Here are a couple of the prayers written inside. Dear God, help me to remember to be grateful for the many blessings in my life. Help me to look around this miraculous world with joyful and appreciative eyes, and please show me ways to use my gifts to bring health and peace to the world near where I live and far, far away. Dear God, thank you for bestowing such beauty and wealth of resources to our country, Canada. Give courage and hope to those who struggle for one reason or another. Dear God, please help others to see the light that is your love. Dear God, please allow the love in the world to overcome hatred. Those words are as meaningful today as they were in 2009 when they were written. And I wondered if this could be something that you might like to spearhead here during this time apart. You could ask the congregation to send you pictures of what they're doing these days while dealing with COVID-19, and you could ask them to send you their prayers. Dear God letters that they would like to share with the rest of the congregation. I'm sure that one or two of your teachers from church school would help if you ask, and there are lots of great sites to put a book together. If you decide to try this, please let me know. I'd love to see what you make. The scriptures this morning begin with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We go on to hear about a shepherd again in John 10, reading 1 to 10. Let me set this before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over or through the fence of a sheep pen, instead of going through the gate, you know he is up to no good, a sheep rustler. The shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognize his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them 
and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. They won't follow a stranger's voice, but will scatter because they aren't used to the sound of it. Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So, he tried again. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I come so that we can have real and eternal life, more and better life than we ever dreamed of. Thanks be to God for these scripture passages. This morning's anthem is Just a Closer Walk with Thee, and we offer a special thanks to Larry Wesley and to Lise Robinson and to Jean-Jacques Rousseau.
signed by Hilda Logsdale and Cecil DeWolf. I enjoyed Sunday school here back in the days when the downstairs was filled to overflowing with children and Reverend Corkum was our minister. I was a member of CGIT, as Ron said, and High C, and was confirmed by Reverend Percival after taking weekly classes in his study, a study that doesn't look all that different today. I remember when the addition was built and how excited and proud my senior class was to be able to have our Sunday morning classes in the new upper room. I went to UCW meetings with my mom, and when I got older, I served alongside of her at the catered meals they provided. As an older teen, I was asked to serve on the search committee that called Reverend Eric Reed. And I have to tell you that this was something that happened, that was not something that happened regularly. You, as a church, were years ahead of the curve in including and encouraging young people to take on leadership roles. All of these moments, all of the wonderful people involved here, were gateways in my faith journey. When I started preparing something to share on this anniversary Sunday, I found myself looking back on those days that I spent here as a child and teenager, and I lost myself in wonderful memories. This is a church that opens doors or gates for people of all ages, for people who are seeking and searching, as well as for people who are certain of their next steps, confident in their beliefs, and able to articulate their faith. This is a church that opens doors or gates to follow Jesus, inviting all who enter to come and be part, to come and be followers of the way. Following Jesus, being people of the way, means not knowing what comes next, not knowing what unexpected gateways might open up, but having the faith that you are not alone on the journey. As a child growing up in the country, I often walked the fields. When I was upset or angry, worried, or sad, and when I was truly excited about things. I was a solitary child, and I think in many ways I couldn't always find the words to express my feelings in the midst of the people around me. Instead, I spoke them out loud as I walked. When I was about nine, I was sitting on a large granite rock in the middle of a fence row on our farm just outside of town trying to work out where I fit into the world. It was then that I realized that the unspoken presence that heard the outpouring of my heart was God. More than that, I was overcome with this sense of calm, and I knew that God had a purpose for me if I just let myself be open to the possibility that God would guide my feet and lead me through unexpected future gateways. I somehow knew that this was more than just the God of my Sunday school lessons. This was my God, the one who loved me and called me by name. And I knew that I would follow this God through whatever gateways opened up for me. Those gateways led me eventually into the paid account of the ministry and, and an unquenchable thirst to know more, learn more, experience more, feel more, and love more in the service of Jesus. As a small child, one of my Sunday school teachers was Elsie Van Allen. I remember her as a warm and caring woman who always made you feel welcome, always remembered your name, even if she met you out in the real world. When I graduated from her class, she gave me a small cardboard plaque with the words, The Lord is my shepherd on it. It hung on the mirror of my dresser all of my growing up years, and I still have it tucked away amongst my treasures. I remember learning the lesson of the 23rd Psalm in different classes over my years here, and 
how different people explained it. I also remember learning it as memory work. Now that dates me, doesn't it? It's been years since we have done that sort of thing with our children. I'm not sure whether it was that little plaque that I saw every day, or the many, many ways we would have studied the passage, but it is one that is not only written in my memory, but also written on my heart. The words of the 23rd Psalm offer comfort as they speak of a God who loves you so much that you need not be afraid, who loves you so much that you are never alone, a God who leads you through the pathways and the gateways of life. Marcus Ford once wrote that God was like a large ball with windows and that our view of God is through one of them. As Christians, we see God through the window of Jesus. We follow the way Jesus leads. Jesus is our gateway. When I read the scripture lessons this morning, I read the first one, the 23rd Psalm, from the King James translation, the one I memorized as a child. I have read and taught it in many different versions through the years, but nothing brings me as much comfort as hearing the lyrical poetry of this translation. It is one of those passages that seems to draw us closer to God, and often in our most trying moments, our darkest days, our valleys of the shadow of death, the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, can so often come to our minds. In the John passage, Jesus lets us in on who he is, who he can be for us. I read it from the message because I like the simpler, plainer explanation found there. Maybe it is because for many years I wrote curriculum for church school and using language that is closer to words children speak today makes it more inviting for them to talk about what the passage means to them and says to them. Simpler words or not, I found the same comfort here as I do in the song. Here is the assurance that God lives, that God came in Jesus to remind us that we are not alone. The scripture says, the shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognize his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. We are familiar with Jesus' voice. We are familiar with his teachings. For to us, he is the gateway. More than that, he is our companion on the journey, our teacher, our guide, our friend. So on this anniversary Sunday, let's remember how blessed we are, not only to be children of God, sheep of the great shepherd, but also to be part of this community, St. John's United Church, where we are supported and encouraged on our faith journeys by the others who walk beside us. Moving forward, may God be with each of you on the paths that open up through the gateways before you. I invite you to sing along to our next hymn, Are You a Shepherd, found in More Voices 126. <laughs>
Augustine of Hippo offered this prayer. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servants of others, as he was the servant for all, who gave up his life and died for us, but is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Today we add to that prayers of our own as we struggle to make sense of the things happening in the world. We pray for the strength to connect, excuse me, we pray for the strength to continue our walk with Christ on the path laid out before us. We pray for guidance and insight as we look for ways to serve others in our community. No offer of help is too small. No small deed goes unaccepted. We know fully won the power of prayer in Jesus' name, and we will continue to daily pray for all those affected in any way by COVID-19. Today we especially offer our prayers of thanksgiving for those on the front lines, doctors, nurses, nursing home staff, cleaners, cookers, volunteers, first responders, garbage collectors, grocery store workers, companies who have retooled their abilities to make, very, make new necessary supplies, truck drivers, and people offering takeout services. These are just a few of the many who are helping and we offer our prayers for them all. Not only our grateful prayers, but also prayers that you keep them safe and healthy throughout. We pray for the families who have lost a loved one, especially those who were unable to be together because of physical distancing. We pray for all those who are living in retirement residences and long-term care facilities. Hold them close in these uncertain and fearful days. Our prayers become our actions as we continue to walk through these trying times. Be with us, Holy God, so that we may be kinder, softer in our approach, more understanding and more willing to share the road with others, even at a distance. All of this we pray in the name of the one with whom we walk. We bring ourselves and our prayers to you as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's look at the words on the screen and join together in the singing of our last hymn, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, found in Voices United 600. Thank you. 
and now. Let us go from this time together awakened to the treasures within and around us, to bring transformation, challenge, and hope to the world as we follow Jesus through unexpected gateways. And may the abundant blessing of God, Source, Savior, and Spirit, be ours today and always. Happy anniversary, St. John's. Happy anniversary, St. John's. <laughs>